Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this review storm. And at the eye of this one, the season premiere of Power Rangers Beast Morphers. This is the 26th season of Power Rangers here in America. And it adapts pretty much the same plot from its Japanese counterpart, Tokume Sentai Go Busters. This is also the first time that we have gone back as America to adapt a past series. This was the 36th series. We're on season four. They were on series 42 or 43 in Japan now, so we've gone back a couple years to grab this and adapt it for America. The main plot is that uh, there's a new energy, in the case of America it's called Morphex, and it ends up being corrupted by a computer virus, in this case a giant cobra named Evox Cobra. And um, we there's a team of Power Rangers that has to defend it. So we start with... Uh, reporter giving exposition, basically, that today is the day they're going to activate the Morphex in Coral Harbor. That's the name of the town. And the mayor is going to preside over the ceremony and flip the switch to send the Morphex energy throughout Coral Harbor. It's good, clean energy, but will it be used for evil, she asks. And after that, <laughs> we cut to... Uh, she, the reporter is not the best actress in this whole thing, uh, by a mile. We cut to a gym where there's a karate lesson going on, and we see the trainer, whose name turns out to be Blaze, because I'm sure there's a family out there who's probably already done that, <laughs> and he's leading the class in pretty basic punches, uh, but one kid's not paying attention. He's got his earbuds in, he's rocking out to his music. How Blaze hasn't noticed this beforehand is beyond me, because even though the kid's in the back of the class, I mean, he's clearly been doing this for a few minutes at this point. But Blaze notices him you know, and asks, are we distracting you? And he says, yeah. And it's like, oh, wait, you're being sarcastic. And this is our introduction to Devin, who is going to be a main character. Um, he's a little cocky at the start. It seems like he kind of redeems himself. We'll see what happens with future episodes. Um, but he wants something more challenging than just punches. So Blaze decides to throw a kick at him and start con continually trying to attack him. And Devin just starts dodging and blocking and trying to not get hit, basically. Warning Blaze that somebody's going to get hurt. Blaze ends up subsequently punching a metal pole, not breaking his hand, and <laughs> being hurt. Blaze tries to attack with weapons as two people uh, are focused as they're watching on. This is Ravi and Roxy, and we'll get to why they're important in a minute. So the fight ends as Devin manages to grab Blaze's weapons, two wooden sticks, and cross them against his throat, basically. And he hears uh, Devin from behind him, and he turns around. His dad is there, and his dad is the mayor of Coral Harbor. So he takes him out of the class. We then find out that Devin skipped a job interview to go to this karate lesson, and that it was a job that his dad had pulled strings to get him the interview for. And I just feel like it's a Devin is a little disrespectful when it comes to his father I mean he's pulling mayoral strings which could get him in trouble quite frankly to get you a job especially if you don't do well and you're not showing up is going to look bad on him as it is but as they're writing he's not really paying attention so Devin sneaks a picture of his dad's uh, badge because he finds out that they're going to grid battle force which is the giant building uh, that we see in the uh, opening shot. Uh, Grid Battle Force comes from the fact that in Japan, the series was called Tokume Sentai Go Busters. So there was a big GB logo. So the GB had to be named something in America. So Grid Battle Force um, is what it was. And they pull up to the Grid Battle Force building because the mayor is going to go inside and expect all the Morphex stuff before he flips the switch and just, you know, make sure everything's going okay. And this is when we find out that he doesn't really like the idea of this Morphex because it could be used for evil. And we'll get, again, more into that in a minute. He walks inside, the limo starts to pull away, and Devin says, wait, I've got it from here. And the limo just stops. I don't know why. Devin doesn't pay them, bribe them do anything. There's no fight. There's no nothing. He just gets out of the car and the limo just drives off again. It's like, okay, I guess, you know, <laughs> if you, the mayor's not there to listen to, you just automatically do what, he son, what his son says. But he sneaks inside. As he's trying to sneak inside, we come across the biggest problem with this premiere. I don't know what their names are. They're not named. But they are two grid battle force 
greeters, I guess. Their security, I guess, for Grid Battle Force. And the he comes, the mayor walks in, and she checks his ID, and she says, this looks a lot like you. And he's like, yeah, it is me. And she calls for a retinal scanner, and she's using a step stool because she's short to see over her own desk. And th this is the stupid part of this show. Like, Monty and Vic were the stupid parts of Ninja Steel to the point where they were really annoying. This is the stupid part of Beast Morphers. And not, like, good stupid like Bulk and Skull back in the day. No, this is just the stupid stupid. And she calls for a retinal scanner, and this guy brings one over, and he, oh, you'll never know it's even on! And it doesn't work until he, like, Men in Black, like, flashes himself with it and stumbles into the desk, knocking papers. So they blind the mayor, they use a metal detector wand and tickle him. It's a weird scene. It's the weirdest scene, easily, in the premiere. But Devin sneaks in and gets past security. And as he's being harassed, I guess, by these people, they're wondering who he is, and he's asking, do you know who I am? Uh, we meet Zoe, who comes in and says, you're the mayor. And the two buffoons, for lack of a better word, are, oh, the mayor, oh! And they kind of scramble as, she, as Zoe introduces herself and leads the mayor uh, back where he needs to go. So we find out she's a laundry girl. She flunked out of Grid Battle Force, uh, but she is still there working. Um, but she's not treated very well. Everyone just kind of dumps their laundry and leaves. And she doesn't run from big problems. She solves them. That's kind of her catchphrase. That's her thing. Devin is... We don't have a catchphrase or really a trope for Devin yet. Um, Zoe's is, I don't run from big problems. I solve them. And I fix them. And that's going to be important to her later in this episode. But the mayor ends up meeting with the commander of Grid Battle Force, and he's led in, and we see that there's a scientist, a young prodigy kid named... Uh, I forget his name. Anyway, he is the one who tapped into the Morphin Grid to make Morphex. And uh, as Devin has come in at this point beforehand and been messing around the lab he hides behind stuff and he sees uh morphex get infected with something purple and this is and the this cobra head appears and that is what turns out to be evox uh meanwhile we see that uh the mayor is worried because the likes uh and monsters from every dimension the likes of rita scourge and yeah and Galvanax have tried to take over uh, universes before. And it's really interesting that they bring up those names. Um, and so the commander tells him that we're preparing for that. And they're going to use the Morphex energy combined with animal DNA to make Power Rangers. And they've already got their candidates chosen can't reveal the identities because they want to keep them a secret. And I actually like this idea, um, trying to protect them and protect their people. Um, but Devin is there and he's watching and we see as he sees, um, that they are Blaze, Ravi and Roxy from the karate gym earlier. Uh, they're the ones getting prepped to be power Rangers. Devin is startled by Evox and reveals himself and gets thrown into detention cells as they get ready to make uh, Morphex real and the Power Rangers uh, force real. So the mayor goes out and he throws the switch to make the Morphex happen. And they throw the switch inside and they start making the team into Rangers. But the green Morphex energy soon turns purple and the system starts to crash. So Devin's detention cell doors open. He's able to go and get out and get in there. Zoe decides she doesn't. She's not going to run away. She's not going to evacuate. She's going to help fix this big problem. So she and Devin pull up there about the same time. The Morphex energy first infects Blaze's capsule and turns him into a dark red ranger-looking figure. He looks uh, sort of like the old uh, Thunder Ranger, uh, the burgundy one from... Ninja Storm, all those years ago. 
then infects Roxy and a female minion appears and it's about to infect Ravi when they do manage to stop it and Ravi is released before he is corrupted before his evil twin is created as they put it later uh, Devin and Zoe start fighting trying to stop the uh, avatars which is what they're known as and they're holding their own okay um, and Ravi uh Ravi and Roxy had a relationship before they were set to be Power Rangers. And there's a rule at Grid Battle Force that when you are Rangers, you can't date. So, I mean, he and so he is sticking to this rule. And Roxy in the flashback says, didn't you say it was a stupid rule? He's like, yeah, but it's still a rule. So he's the rule stickler. So he's going to be, you know, we're going to push him to break rules, I think, throughout the season. But um, Ravi, Devin, and Zoe do a decent job until the female minion, we don't have names for them yet, uh, tangles them up in cords uh, that she launches from her fingers. And the scientist, uh, Kid Prodigy, knocks down a grating, severing the cords, and kind of knocking, and sort of sending the uh, Devin, Ravi, and Zoe stumbling back into the pot, where he hits a button and finishes the morph to turn them into Power Rangers for the first time. Uh, Devin has been combined with cheetah DNA, Ravi has been combined with gorilla DNA, Zoe has been combined with jackrabbit DNA, so we have speed, leaping ability, and strength. And they fend them off until they can set up a series of teleporters, uh, which teleport them away, which teleport the bad guys away. And so we end with um, Roxy and Blaze are in pods and they are asleep until the avatars of their evil twins are beaten. The new team of Rangers is going to go train in the battle simulator and they're going to get ready to fight Evox's minions and protect the Morphin Grid and protect Coral Harbor subsequently. I really liked this season premiere for the most part. Uh, the two buffoons in the office area I can do without, especially if they're as prominent as Victor and Monty were in Ninja Steel. Um, but I like the acknowledgement of the past with uh, Rita, Scourge, and um, Galvanax being mentioned. I like um, the way a lot of it worked out, and it seemed fairly serious. I mean, we'll have to see how it all plays out, but I really, really have high hopes at this point for this season. Um, again, we'll just have to see. Uh, Power Rangers Beast Morphers, like I said, first series by uh, Hasbro. It's going to be really interesting uh, to see where they go from here. That's it for this one, guys. That is lights out on this review storm of the season premiere of Power Rangers Beast Morphers.